<laughs> Are we all set now? Is it I think so. Thank you. Want me to read the uh, precursor? That'd be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions, which means open I meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020, and March 23rd order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the town of Southampton Select Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to or view this meeting while in progress may do so by go to zoom.us forward slash join, hit join a meeting in the top right of screen, type in meeting ID 886-3689, 2159. Password is 046963. Hit join. Please be sure to mute your device when joining in. Note to join in video meeting with cell phone, you will need to download the Zoom app from the App Store. Call in telephone number is 646 558 8656. Or by watching Public Access TV Charter Spectrum Channel 191. In person attendance and public comment at select board meetings will be suspended until further notice. If you email a written public comment before the scheduled select board meeting, it will be read at that select board meeting. If you email a written public comment after viewing something at a live televised select board meeting, it will be read at the next select board meeting. Please send your public comments via email to selectmen at townofsouthampton.org. Please note that all public comments must be within the requirements of the policy and public comments listed in the open time of the public on the select board agenda. All right, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the select board meeting. Today is the 5th of February. This is a special select board meeting for the purpose of uh, interviews for the town accountant. We're going to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it for stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, God. with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. So I just want to take one minute and just talk about the process here. So we have two applicants, and I believe John Cole. Uh, K-O-W-A-L is uh, waiting to come into the room. Uh, we have nine questions for them. And so right now, because John is not currently a resident of Southampton, he was very involved in the beginning of uh, the interviews for this position. And he's been very gracious and offering to be part of it uh, uh, tonight. But I, uh, as a non-resident and already having given his resignation, which we'll be reading next Tuesday. Uh, his role here is as a consultant, so he's a non-voting member. Um, we haven't checked references on either of these people. We can decide to have an open discussion afterwards. We can discuss, um, we can hold off and just interview them and have a follow-up discussion on Tuesday since it's on the agenda. But everything would be contingent upon the contract, references, and other uh, you know, uh, checking of uh, backgrounds and so forth. So just wanted to mention that there are nine questions and there's three select board members here. So we'll, um, myself and then Francine and Chris, and we'll just rotate three times. And then the last question is, what kind of questions do you have for us? Does that sound all right? Fine. All right. <clears throat> Sounds good. So what order do you want to go in? Uh, so me, the Francine, question. and then Chris. Okay. okay. All righty. Okay. John, thanks so much for being for here. Let, You're welcome. Okay. Ready for me to let John call? We are. That? We are. Okay. There we go. Hi, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Yep. yep. Hi there. How do you do? My name is Maureen Groden. I also go by Rini. I'm the chair of the select board. And then the rest of the folks on the line here can introduce themselves. So then we'll start in. Great. Thank you. Chris Fowles, 
Francine Tishman. Ken Cole. Ken. Yeah. Hi, hi, John. John. Hey, how are you, John? Yes. Good, yourself? Good, thank you. <coughs> and Ed, hi, I John. How are you today? Oh, very good. Thank you very much. All right. Are we all successfully unmuted? Should be. All right. <laughs> So, John, thank you very much for being here. Um, we're just going to go along, and uh, we have uh, uh, nine questions for you. I do believe that you were provided with these questions beforehand. Yes, I have them, and thanks. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'll just start um, for the benefit of anybody else that's watching, and um, I'll just start by asking you to please tell us a little bit about yourself and why would you like to be the town accountant for the town of Southampton? Sure. Well, uh, my name is John Kowal. I live in uh, East Granby, Connecticut, here with my uh, wife and two daughters who are currently students at Western New England College and uh, Westfield State. I have ties to Southampton. I grew up in Southampton. I still have my mother who lives there and my brother and his family live there. Uh, Southampton is, in many ways, I still consider uh, home. Uh, I'm also. John, John, can I just stop you for one second? Sure. This background noise. Um, is there somebody that has a TV or something in the background? Let me mute myself and see if that does it. I think that did it. Oh, yeah. that did it. Okay, did sorry it. about sorry about that. Uh, oh, don't be John, sorry. No, that's uh, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So you're. No, you're no, that's fine. Time. Uh, yeah, just I, I'm a, you know a, a, I grew up in Southampton. I uh, own a piece of property in Southampton. Not a it's a building lot. My mom and brother live there, so Southampton is I, in many ways I still consider my home. Um, I my education I went to uh, University of Massachusetts uh, with a, a graduated with a. Uh, bachelor's of business administration and then i got my master's degree at western new england used to be college now it's western new england university um i've been working in the accounting field one way or another for over 27 years uh, my last 18 years has been with a company called connecticut attorney title insurance company it's a it's a small but growing title insurance company where uh in all the New England states. Um, it was, um, and being a smaller company, at one point there was, in the accounting department, there was a CFO, and it was a very, uh, a CFO, a controller, an assistant controller, that's what I was and am, and an accounts payable and accounts receivable person. And given the size of the department, I was involved in a lot of different uh, uh, I had I was able to be involved in a lot of hands-on functions between accounts payable, receivables, uh, budgeting processes, um, all types of filings for all sorts of uh, a lot of different uh, uh, you know state, local, uh, town uh, filings, and I just kind of looked at the I wasn't actively looking for a job, but. Just once in a while, I look through the Indeed and things like that, and I always look. I always look at things around East Granby, and I, <laughs> I always look around things for Southampton. And I saw the town accounting job, and um, it just interests me. I uh, was lucky enough to get an interview with uh, Ed and John, and um, I was even more interested in the position after talking to them. Yes, and what part of it appeals to you? Is it because of your uh, ties to Southampton? Is it uh, the idea that you're sort of, um, a, you know, in an office with the, just an assistant, or what part of it appeals to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, a big part of it is being Southampton. A big part of it, it would be a, uh, it would be a different um, field of accounting for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the idea of the, the smallness of it. Um, um, and I'm interested in the town in general and, um, you know, all that together, um, it, it just sparked my interest. Oh, good. All right, thanks. Francine? 
things. Okay, John, what are some of the skills you bring that you believe would make you a good match for the job in Southampton? And then there's a part two here. I'm sure. Is this a position that you believe that you feel you can grow in professionally, learn additional skills, and expand your accounting knowledge? Sure. In the first part of that, I think I have extensive budgeting. Uh, I, 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 I sort of head the budgeting process for our company. Uh, we have, oh God, we have like eight, eight branches. And we also have uh, department heads at our home office. So we're probably talking with talking uh, with, with dealing with the budget for about oh 15 individuals when it's all said and done. And um, I've been very instrumental in not only being able to uh, uh, show them like past history to help them come up with their budget numbers, but also you know, answer any questions that they might have. And it's a very collaborative effort. I mean, given my time there, um, it's it, it, that's been a big advantage. Uh, I think people trust me and um, uh, it, 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 we've just had a very nice working relationship. Uh, so it looked like, you know, budgeting and, and, and reporting is, you know, at least from the, from what I understand of the job seems like to be a significant portion of it. And I think that's one of my strong suits is communication, is collaborating, is getting along with people. Um, I like I like to believe I have good people skills. Um, <laughs> maybe that's for other people to decide, but I, uh, I, uh, I I like to believe that that's one of my strong points. And the second part of your question was, what would I have to do? Well, you know, municipal to a certain degree. Uh, there's definitely um, crossovers. Like, if you understand accounting, you can you can get there to municipal accounting. Although there is a lot of differences, but um, I was to prepare myself. I, I've had a little background in it. I I've, I've been involved in our town's um, uh, budgeting. Uh, I, I, I've just been involved with it just from an interested citizen point of view. So I know a little bit about it, you know, um, but to prepare myself uh, just to know something, I went on YouTube and, and, uh, and, and watched a couple of videos and I could pretty much start to, under, I'm not saying that I would have, I'm not saying I'm some municipal you know, accounting star already, but I mean, even watching that much, I started to put things together. And a lot of it, it involves like vocabulary. The concepts are the same. The vocabulary is a little different. You know, the, there's the funds. I understand general fund, and and those are things that I I I find interesting. And I think that um, with a little bit of work, well, a lot of work, I'll, I can get myself up to speed. And 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 uh, and that would be a that, but that's a big challenge. And but that's something I am very interested in, in pursuing. Good. Thanks, John. Good. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, number three. And of course, another two part question. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have trouble being concise, maybe. Maybe that's okay. <laughs> hey, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so describe a specific work experience that you've had where your organizational and your interpersonal skills uh, have contributed to a successful outcome. And at the same time, describe a time where you wish you would have done things differently. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've had both. <laughs> uh, we all have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, last year, we decided to change our whole chart of, well, our expense side of chart of accounts, because we are feeling that a lot of the people, a lot of the stakeholders, a lot of the branch managers really weren't, I could explain what goes into the uh, categories, what, what what sort of expenses are supposed to go in there, but they weren't very clear. And we also kind of wanted to change the chart of accounts so it more closely reflected the statutory reporting that we have to do. Uh, insurance companies have a lot of statutory; they're very heavily regulated. We have the, and uh, we wanted to make sure that these uh, expense chart of accounts. One, we're more clear for the uh, our, our stakeholders, and two, made it easier for us when we when we did our statutory filing. So that was very complicated in a way because we um, 
you would have a lot of times the, the accounts wouldn't, um, they would be bucketed expenses, but then we are sort of breaking up the bucket more so to make it more transparent. But when the people were trying to do it at that point, when people are trying to do their budget, they were used to the old way and you weren't really comparing um, apples to apples. It was, it, it, it was close, but there'd be changes. So that was hard because you would, sh we had our, all our information was based on the old, the old chart of accounts, all the, all the uh, past information that they had. And then we're saying, okay, Hey guys, fill out this budget with this, with these new, you know, these new costs. And it was like, but once again, you know, um, I, not only was I uh, very helpful in the, uh, being the person would say, okay, this is our new account. What, what, what sort of matched up what in the past? So I was very good at that. And I was able to explain it to our guys. And, and, uh, and not only that, then our system, then we had to get it into the system. And that meant all the new accounts and um, validating them and getting, and then getting the budget into the, and that was right in the middle of the COVID thing too. So I was doing it at home <laughs> and it was, it was quite a, quite a process, but I mean, basically persevered and got it done, you know, and, um, I was pretty. I was very proud of that uh, achievement. It was. It was difficult, but we did it. As far as, um, something that hasn't worked out as well as I would have hoped. I we we have not only do we have the two insurance companies, but we have all these little subsidiary companies that are are not insurance companies, and it, so it's all these. And in many cases, we have a lot of intercompany. Um, charges going to and fro, you know, I guess not unlike some of the funds that uh, you guys have. But um, it used to be everybody who had their own company, like I, I'm responsible for, I think it's either three or four companies that I do the bookkeeping for. Um, I would figure out the intercompanies and work it out that way. But we decided to try to have a person do the intercompanies for everybody, excuse me. And it just hasn't worked out that well because the person really doesn't know the, the, the businesses that um, um, like we do, if, you know, they would if they worked on them, but they didn't. And it was, it was sort of my idea to kind of like do that. And I don't know, it, it seems like it made more, things more complicated than, than easier. So that was sort of a fail. <laughs> but it was, uh, but it, 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 but 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 it wasn't a total fail because our uh, CFO has he's the only one that can can transfer funds between all the different companies, and he didn't want to have like everybody hey, oh, do this do this do this he he did want to have it. Um, a, a, just a brief thing. All right, let's, let's, what do I have to move? And just, so it did work in that way, but I don't know. I, if, if, we, if we do it again, I don't think I would have, uh, I would have pursued this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Okay. So the next question, John is, uh, what is your level of experience again with municipal accounting and how would you go about improving your knowledge of municipal accounting? You did answer that to some degree. Um, yeah, you know, right. Like I said, I looked at my note here, limited, but growing. And I did, I, I, uh, uh, how would I go about it? I would do that. I mean, nowadays you really can learn so much online. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I was happy, you know, at an hour, I'm watching an hour video, but I was putting things together. And, and I also noticed on there, there's all kinds of resources. We indeed had one. And, um, you know, I can start to put those things together and, and I get an idea. In the, in the beginning, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of like, you're, I'm using my gap accounting to kind of, what are they, what are they getting at here? And it's almost like, you know, when you learn, when you learn, uh, Spanish. I've never got to the point where I could think in Spanish, you know, but, <laughs> but I mean, you, you make these, you're making these conversions in your mind and yes, there's, there's some differences, but there's also a lot of similarities. 
-hmm. And I could see myself starting to put it together. So I would do more of that self-study. If, you know, I'm fortunate enough to get the job, you know, before being hired, I, 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 I would work hard to get a working knowledge of it anyway. Then I'd have to come in and actually see your guys' systems and all your different accounts and things like that, obviously. And I know I, I noticed that the job said that you uh, should get a certification of Massachusetts Municipal Accountants and Auditors Association within three years. I imagine that's something you can probably study for. And I would think that that would probably go a long way in um, helping me, um, uh, you know, become uh, more competent. Um, but I really, I th at this point, you know, I don't think I would even try for a job if I didn't think I could kind of uh, be successful. So, uh, especially I've had this other place for 18 years. So I think I can do it and uh, it'll take work. And that's basically what everything does, but there's nothing, there's no concept there that, you know, I, I don't think I can, that I won't be able to grasp, you know? Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks. Okay. This touches a little bit the next question on the one you just answered, but maybe you can expand on a little bit more. Which of your previous experiences, though not in municipal government, do you feel most closely resembles this position and why? Yeah. I mean, from the, from the right up, right. Um, it, it, and from just going to my town meetings, you know, I think, I think, um, yeah, well, I would think like that most of the, it would be the budgeting, um, the reporting and, um, the state and town filings and federal filings that I have to do. I would think that was probably, uh, the ones, um, the experiences that I do have that would probably, I mean, at least from my understanding of the position would probably come into play, uh, the most. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yep. So how do you um, envision your role interfacing with other departments? Um, do you kind of expect all departments to be held to the same standard? And if so, how do you maintain adherence to that, to those standards? Right. Well, I think, first of all, you have to understand the standards yourself. So I mean, that would be some work and uh, see what those standards are. And uh, yes, and then without a doubt, I mean, I imagine at uh, a certain point, you know, we'll, we'll develop, I'm hoping, friendships with uh, some of these folks, and uh, but that will not affect uh, how I write. Well, if, if there's standards to be followed, they have to be followed, friends or not. I mean, it's, uh, it'll, it'll, you know, it, so yeah, I mean, everybody will be held to, the, including me, to the, to the standards that we're supposed to meet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the next question is accounting supports each department, uh, which is headed by independent dis, uh, decision makers, department heads. You don't have a decision making role, but you become aware that a department uh, head did not follow protocol. How would you correct it and make certain that the same situation didn't occur again? Right. <clears throat> and, you know, you can't expect people to follow the protocol if you don't know the protocol. So I would have to make sure that I understand what the protocol is and, and be able to explain it to people. Um, um, you know, I also imagine that um, if some, it depended on how important of a, or how big of a thing was, was what protocol was broken. I mean, I suppose if it's, you know, hopefully if it's a minor, you can just kind of, hey, let's work it out and, and um, you know, and, and, you know, hopefully 90% of the time people are willing to discuss and to compromise and to, you know, come to an understanding. Um, and then, you know, if it's something large or, you know, something that's really going to hurt our town, well, then they have to kind of bring it up to chart of command. But you know, you hope you don't have to do that. Um, I just a little example. Um, I, when I what job before this, I worked at uh, a Cigna Retirement Investment Services that was in Hartford. They ended up getting bought out by Prudential. Anyway, I was in charge of the accounting for a little 
entity out in Dubuque, Iowa, and um, Cigna got a grant um, because of the being in Dubuque, I guess. And I was sort of like pressured by somebody kind of high up to report this as uh, a negative expense. But I knew that that had like tax implications and and I, you know, I kind of, I said, well, I really can't do that. I, you know, I, <laughs> I, grant, I have to kind of count it as a grant. And there was a little pushback, but we, we, we talked about it. And then I think she ended up understanding because she, she cared about the expense line, not the revenue line, because it really wasn't a revenue producing place. But I mean, that's how I thought it had to be done. And, uh, and, uh, and, and that's how it was done. And I think, you know, she came to understand that and we, and, you know, that was uncomfortable because right? that's somebody, you know, almost telling you what to do. But I didn't, I knew that wasn't the way to report it. So that's a little example of um, yeah. of something that I was able to, uh, you know, it ended up being fine, you know. <laughs> she didn't fire me, so <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the accountant position is central to town government. It requires familiarity with laws, regulations, attention to detail, organizational skills, confidentiality, and adherence to operational deadlines. That sounds familiar to you, I'm sure. <laughs> sure. Can you speak to your skills in these areas? Yeah. Well, really, I I do my job um, with very little. I suppose I should be able to after 18 years, right? There's very little supervision uh, that I that I require, uh, and I have a lot of deliverables to a lot of different people, and I have to always balance things. And um, you know, sometimes it's easy because with the with the uh, insurance company that's highly regulated, every state you're in. Um, you have to file all kinds of uh, documents, usually in March, and then there's a little less to rest. But when you pay your premium taxes in these states, there's all kinds of uh, other additional um, things that they want, usually money. <laughs> but uh, um, so, but they, but that's due like March 1st. So a lot of these times their deadlines are set up for you, you know. And that's you know that's that's easy. It's uh, trying to balance the other ones um, with those things that's difficult. And I'm I'm very good at it. I'm self motivated. Um, um, very rarely do I drop the ball on something. Um, and that's just being that just that you know you have to be organized. You have to know what you have to do, and then you have to do it. So um, I feel that's a strength of mine. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Leslie, John, uh, as you've read, this is a, a 30 hour per week position. Um, so do you feel that the schedule is going to work for you in the long term? Or is this something where you think you might require additional hours to to want to remain in the position in the future? No, right. I mean, um, no, I think that's fine. And I knew I knew that going going into it. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I have two kids that I still have to get through school. Um, but you know, I plan to work for a long time and I, I feel like, um, you know, originally I'm thinking, well, maybe another three years here and then another, and, and then maybe at a, uh, an opportunity, something similar to this, but by the same token, these opportunities don't come up very often. <laughs> and so, um, no, I understand, uh, that, that that's what it is. And, um, and, you know, it's at this stage of the game, this is not going to be a stepping stone for me to, you know, to uh, go to uh, Westfield or something or, or whatever, you know, this will, this will be my, you know, this will be my job. And, um, uh, you know, so, uh, so yeah, I'm to answer your question. Yes, I'm aware of it. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, John, what questions do you have for us about the town, about the position, about anything, actually? Sure. Now, is there anybody doing the the, the job now, or yes, there... we have it. We have an interim uh, oh. accountant um, currently. Oh, okay. All right. And um, how 
about is there anything that uh, reports or or, or uh, something ex explained or things like that that you had always wanted that you couldn't have or has people been able to meet your guys request as to has there ever been something gee why can't we do this or why can't we do that have you ever had that uh... well i'll answer then i'll ask everybody else to answer including uh john um so we get uh revenue and expense reports and yeah, I think there's been a little bit of uh, improvement that could happen with the reports. I think, um, you know, I would like them to be more current or detailed or, you know, a number of things, especially on the um, revenue side. There's just been some things that we could, I think there could be improvements. You know, every every year is marked by, you know, challenges. You know, last year we had COVID. We had drastic state uh reductions in our income uh, across the board. Uh, a couple of years before that, it was an override approved budget. Um, so it's a challenge for, on the fiscal side. There's no question about it. So having good current reports and having, um, you know, as much import as possible on the accounting side is, is a huge help and having it be current helps us a lot. And I think there have been some gaps in that. So. Mm -hmm. How about you? Francine has been a liaison uh, to the Finance Committee and was a previous Finance Committee member. And we also have our chair of uh, the Finance Committee with us uh, also. So um, please speak up, Francine. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to mention that it's been my understanding, because I've asked for things perhaps in a different format that for me would make it more comprehensible, and I think maybe to others as well. And you'll you'll see that when you actually see the system and my um, the explanation given to me was this is this is how the state has set up the system and this is how we're required to do it so i'm assuming that that's the correct answer i would love to see um more intelligible reports user-friendly reports i guess is what i want to say uh, not from an accounting perspective but from a user's perspective i, I think that would assist, I think, the people on the select board, and it might be, be beneficial also to the department heads whose budgets they're managing. Well, I've always felt that way with, like, um, when I go with deal with the branch managers, um, that, that's, that's right. I, I'm not the type that, um, say, oh, well, you should understand this, you know, it's it, that that's not what, I don't understand they're the money makers, and they're the there are. I don't understand everything they do by any stretch of the imagination, and you know the information's only valuable if it helps you guys make decisions and see what's going on. And I don't know. There may be a certain. There may be both. There may be a certain. Maybe you have to present it a certain way, but it's hard to imagine that there couldn't be additional reports that uh, sort of. Uh, break down the most important things that you guys want to see. And I'd be very, you know, that at the end of the day, it's information. If it's information for you guys to make your decisions, well, then, you know, it'd be my job to uh, not force you to look at this and, and figure it out. It'd be, it would be to, uh, you know, present something so that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. It's not that it doesn't. It's just it could be an e it, you would get a better picture if the format were different. Mm -hmm. But if this is the system that the state requires that we use, and, and like I said, I, I that's what I understand, I would love to see them you know, make some changes in their system, yeah. is what I'm trying to say here. But you, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see, you'll, you'll take a look at it, you'll see, you'll understand. Oh, sure. Chris, do you want to um, add to that at all? No, I think that, you know, that, that captures it. I'll, I'll let Ken uh, say something if he'd like to. Yeah. Yeah, Ken is our um, representative and chair of finance. Oh, hi, Ken. Mm -hmm. Ken, are you, um, Ken's oh, muted. Yeah. Yep. Unmute yourself, Ken. There you go. No. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Good. There you go. All right. <laughs> um, nice to meet you, John. Nice um, to meet you. We're, I guess I would say that, you know, we as a finance committee pretty much are all new members. And um, we're in a situation where we have the budgeting process that is already behind schedule. 
And we're already getting um, inquiries as to where are we and where are we going? And it's, it's a situation where we really can't make decisions without reportings. And, and, and I know it's a difficult situation now because, you know, <laughs> the incumbent has left. Uh, we're still in the process of trying to get somebody on board, yet um, the challenge just becomes deeper yeah. uh, for all of us. And I'm not just speaking for the Finance Committee, but the challenge becomes that much more deeper, and I think much more deep. But the issue right now is, is – you know, getting a handle on just where we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, you know, that's going to be a burden for, um, for the, um, <clears throat> the person that's being hired and the people that are trying to shed a light on, you know, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. And I, yeah, so it's a bit of a, yeah, well, yeah, and then you see like you, you it's a unique could, situation, John. There's no question. Yeah, it, it it does seem unique, and it's like, you know, if somebody, I'll be trying to get up to speed. You know, if I'm if I'm the one picked, um, but I do not have the municipal accounting experience. Like I say, I could. And I don't have, you know, um, but I, um, I, uh, I think I could get us there. But I mean, it's it it, it it's hard it's hard to uh, it's hard to say that I could jump in and 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 do it, you know, um, perfectly in the beginning. But all I could do is say is I would be I'd be very willing to jump in and give it my best shot. And I think given my past history I could you know ease it up for you guys but um, yeah it, it, it's 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 mm -hmm. it's too bad that it's a little bit of a what, what, it's it's too bad that it's hey it's just the way it is it's a covert covid world you know yeah. <laughs> everybody's everybody's uh, uh, when we first started working at home I was like a complete disaster you know we, but we got through it and um, you know, so it, it wouldn't be so. This job probably wouldn't be anything different. That's my only concern is I want to get. A, I, I I would have to be confident that I could get up to speed mm -hmm. um, with with um, what's 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 necessary. How about the uh, person that's doing it now? Did do they have much experience, or is it just is it just just yeah, not really? All they're also learning, John. They're, um, you know, they've been. Um, Ed spent a, quite a bit of time um, getting that person up to speed in order to keep things going. So it's been a challenge. But you know, last year uh, we had a very difficult year between COVID, be between uncertain numbers for the state. We ended up passing a month-to-month -month budget for a while, which is what we were had to do. It wasn't unique to our town. That's just the way things had to go with COVID. We had a finance committee where um, we didn't even have, right now we have a finance committee that might be new, but very qualified, very committed people that, um, so this year we at least are a little bit better off with having at least a finance committee. Last time we had a husband and wife team that were on the finance committee and left together. So that didn't, you know, that caused some challenges. Um, so anyway, we have a budget uh, process and bylaw. And um, so when you mentioned about being a little bit behind, we're trying very hard to uh, stay on track with that, with Ed sending out uh, Excel spreadsheets. I also want to mention that um, Ed has uh, been with us for three years and uh, will be able to help out. We have a treasure collector, Jen, who um, has been tremendously helpful. So, um, you know, it's, we just, face each challenge as it comes and try as best we can to uh, keep things going. I mean, that's been the story for, you know, where I work and for most places uh, we're in unprecedented times and we happen to be in a big disadvantage um, with the folks that have left. Um, but uh, it's the world I've been living to where I am. We just have to um, do the best we can. Right. And it's just what it is, what it is. And uh, I could promise you, 
could I promise you I'd be successful? I I have a good feeling that I would be. I could the only promise I could make give you is that I would try I would try my very best to uh, make it a success. And uh, if you do that, typically things work out. And uh, I would take it, you know, seriously and uh, be dedicated. I have my whole working career, and um, um, I think we could make it work. <laughs> We'd make it work. <laughs> uh, what other questions do you have about the position, about the town, or any of the um, committees? Do you have any other questions? Yeah, well, Ed kind of filled me in on um, some of the, like, do you have any idea how many, like, I, I, like you have your general fund, do you have any idea how many funds there are right now? Um, oh, Ed, uh, do you want to answer that? Well, the, the general fund makes up probably 75 to 80 percent of what you know what we have but there are you know, other funds that don't fall within that you know general fund whether they're expendable trusts whether they're revolving funds uh, yeah ca capital stabilization we have operating stabilization uh you know i'd really have to go through and no, 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 Count no. Them, I just, but, just uh, try, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to get an idea as to, and how many, how many, and and uh, and, and, and I think you did tell me, but uh, an idea of how many different uh, stakeholders or departments there are, like transportation or. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've basically got thirteen departments, but we also have boards and co uh, committees on top of that. So when you roll all that in together, we're probably talking about close to thirty. Wow, so that's a lot. Yeah, you, as you know, growing up in the town, I mean, we have the local school, and then we also have the uh, regional school. That's yeah. a whole budget, and you know, school transportation and state funding and all that. And then, of course, police, fire, highway, and uh, library, um, senior center, uh, COA, uh, fire department, probably. Fire, yeah. Yep, yep. Police, fire, highway. We have an EMD right now on CARES Act funding, and then the boards and committees uh, have budgets: uh, con uh, conservation commission, finance committee. So many of them are totally volunteer, without a budget, and some are revolving funds. So it's um, it adds up to be a good number of um, departments and funds. Okay. I just wanted to give John Martin, I apologize, John, I didn't get a chance to give you a chance to just uh, answer the question previously about, um, you know, what, it, you know, from a uh, financial reporting standpoint, are there things that you would want to have from an accountant or do you want to say something about that? John? Yeah, I don't know if it would be directly from a financial reporting, but but because of the financial reports, I think what we lacked a little and what we really need is the person that's in there that can communicate equally with all the department heads and explain to them the expenses, the revenues, and work with the individuals to answer all their questions during the budget process and also during the budget year rather than just you know, deal with certain ones. I think there's a lot of department heads out there that really need a leader on the financial end when it comes to budget. And I think this person needs to be that person. Yeah. And I'm that person now at my company, but that comes with the, because I was there for 18 years, that certainly helps. But, you know, I think the, um, um, those skills, I, I, I do believe I, I have those skills to, uh, um, communicate um, with anybody. I, you know, uh, no, it's not um, the, the years of being like intimidated by somebody or <laughs> all that is gone. That's, <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore. So, I mean, it's like, you know, not afraid to talk to anybody and, and uh, not shy anymore. And uh, so, uh, you know, and just, you know, and have a general in, interest in the person and you know, help them do their job. So, I mean, you take it, you you go into it with that attitude and, you know, maybe I can start to build up some of the trust and things like that, that I've uh, built up at this place over the years. 
Yeah, that's great. I, I agree with John. I think getting, uh, you know, just having uh, someone be able to provide, you know, support. There's a lot of, you know, people that might be department heads may not be experts in the financial end of things. You know, exactly. they're experts in managing a library or, you know, a, a DPW or whatever else. And then there's grants on top of that and different, you know, things. We just got through, a you know, two full um, rounds of CARES Act um, funding. But I just want you to know, too, that there's a lot of good things that are going in town. You know, we feel like we're, you know, have to be reactionary to a lot of different things that happened. Uh, obviously, the worst of all, the pandemic. But, you know, there's a lot of, uh, we have two new committees in town that uh, a lot of interest is a new IT committee. And so there's a group of very smart uh, young folks that are helping on the IT end of things that have an incredibly um, rich background. We have a big interest in preserving open space. And so we have a new open space committee that's very, very um, interested in looking at parcels and educating the public about conservation uh, opportunities and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of people. I mean, this is a beautiful town. And oh, beautiful most town. of us... Most of us feel, you know, fortunate to have landed here if we weren't raised here. And um, so I do think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of having to be reactionary to things, but there's also a lot of good things happening. Oh, sure. And you know what? Any new job is hard. I mean, yeah. uh, the, you know, it's not like, you know, it's about expecting somebody to walk in the park. It's, it's difficult. You know, work is hard, but yeah. uh, that's, that's fine. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm used to working hard. So yep. um, I just, you know, th that, that's the only thing in my mind is like, you know, and if I'm lucky enough to, you know, secure the job, could I watch enough YouTubes and <laughs> walk in there with a semblance of, uh, you know, at least an understanding of what to, what, what sort of what to do, you know, uh, as far as, uh, but, you know, um, uh, like I say, the stuff I've learned so far is it's made made perfect sense to me. So, uh, and I assume anybody walking into it, even if they had municipal or county experience, would still your town's going to be different than other people's towns, and more importantly, people's mm -hmm. personalities are different than other people's personalities. And when it's all said and done, a lot of that deal, a lot of that is going to what's going to happen is how you can how you can um, deal with different personalities and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, when it's said and done, people skills are probably almost as important as the technical skills, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. Um, John, do you have other questions for us? No, I think that's about it. I, uh, I do appreciate your guys' time and considering yeah. me for the job. It was nice to see Ed and uh, John again, and as well as the rest of you. Does anybody on the call have any additional questions for John? Mm. No. 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 John, if you were selected for the position, how how uh, soon do you think that you'd be available for um a start? Yeah. You know, I have been there 18 years. Right. They've been awful they've been awful nice to me. Mm -hmm. But I have to balance your guys' needs with theirs. Mm -hmm. I think when Ed and I and John talked about it a little bit. You know, I was hoping that I could give them three weeks, yeah, but I, you know, um, I'd feel this is like a busiest time for us there. So I'd feel, I would feel guilty giving less than that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it would be three weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to give, I'd like to give them, you know, when I, you know, just assuming I'm the person, uh, I'd like to be at least to be able to give them three weeks. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 that, uh, that would, that would be fair. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, John, thank you very much. You. It was very nice to meet you and, uh, We'll um, obviously be back in touch um, after the um, other interview. Great, thank you guys. Thanks for taking the time, and I really, I really enjoyed meeting you all, yeah. my neighbors. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thanks, John. So, yeah, so we'll be in. Uh, Have a good evening, John. Back in you touch too, guys. Week, John, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Bye bye now. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.
Okay, everybody, we can, uh, if you want, we can just take a little bit of a uh, break. I believe that um, unless Regina happens to be there. No, but I can, if she want, I can reach out and see if she was, is able, or would like to sign on early. Okay. Anybody have any comments about the process in terms of wanting to um, change anything? Or we have to be somewhat similar, but if anybody wants to make a recommendation, happy to entertain that. Everybody's good? Well, Chris had brought up a point about if we had some kind of a score sheet so that we mm -hmm. could each, based on their responses to these questions, have, have rated it. Okay. So, okay. Right, Chris? Think, well, it was, it was a question. I, I thought about it a little late, actually. But, well, yeah. but it's yeah. still doable. So why don't we just take each of these questions? And I find it easier to not have too many numbers to work with. Right. Um, so either score them from zero to three or zero to five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can still do if you want to just. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was taking notes, so I, you know, I, I feel comfortable. I have notes so up on the page. So, um, what what would you prefer, zero to three or zero to five? Let's keep it know. simple. Three yeah. is fine. Okay, zero to three. Okay. So let's just take a moment and do that if you want, and um, or you can do it after the fact. But I'm just going to do that now while we're waiting already. Yeah, for ourselves, and then uh, yeah. when we finish the second one, we can we can talk. Yeah. Okay. But we are not making a decision tonight, are we? Is that correct? we are not? Unless you would like to uh, vote to move uh, forward in some way, but uh, there's a number of steps before yeah. any sort of approval, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, and especially with a meeting coming up on Tuesday, I don't see any need to to make that decision tonight. Yeah. Okay. Right. Is this yeah. meeting being recorded? Um, yes. Ed? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. So theoretically, Matt would be able to watch it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just let us know when she's um, on the call. Please. Will do. This is my first time doing an interview via Zoom. <laughs> Have you done it before? Well, I've had to do it at work a lot oh, lately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You miss that interpersonal stuff, you know? I know. Mm -hmm. I was just saying, I, um, I volunteered last night at the a vaccine clinic 
in Northampton and everybody's so grateful. Everybody's saying the same thing. I just can't wait for this to be over. Everybody's so done. Mm -hmm. Just very you miss uh, even shaking hands with the person, you know, uh, I mean, simple things. Especially what I do too. It's just so, you know, sometimes very sad and stuff. You can't even like offer support and, you know, give someone a hug. It's just really difficult. Yeah. And they can't even have any type of, uh, you know, wake or, you know, it's just really hard all around. Go away. I thought the roads cleaned up really well this with all this snow. I thought that yeah. highway great job. They did, yeah, really good. Really good job. Our street mm -hmm. is off of Moosebrook, which is, ends up being a dirt road, and there's a water crossing on the bottom before it opens up. And I was going to work this morning, and I'm going behind a town truck who's spreading the <laughs> salt sand, and um, and I was thinking, my husband hit that pothole pretty bad. <laughs> it's a hard, you know, place. It probably should have some type of little bridge, but um. Anyway, the town truck went and stayed there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I know that I walk I walk that road a little bit. It's yeah. nice it is nice. I it's my uh, I've been snowshoeing every morning. Before work? Before work. <laughs> <laughs> You are motivated. No, <laughs> uh, it's just it's a it's a necessity. It's the only piece I get. <laughs> go, go. Who's that? The little kitty cat? Oh yes. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> can't be quiet during a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you went to sign in rather than join the meeting. <laughs> yeah. And, and and sometimes if you if it's not on your tablet or laptop, uh, you'll get that. So yeah, you might get a uh, a message that says watch meeting, and you can go go ahead and do that. Okay, and then where the meeting ID was, where you had 886-3689-2259. No, no. Uh, go, I want you to go get out of it and I want you to go to zoom.us. Issues getting to the meeting, so I'm working through those. Okay. Thank you. Meeting ID 886. Correct. Success. Great. No. Okay. Gene is in. Now I just have to wait a few seconds. Muter. I am unmuted. Are you, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Regina. Good evening, Regina. 
Hi, everyone. Hi, Regina. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for uh, interest in the position. Uh, we have a list of questions, and I know you were provided with that. Uh, my name is Rini Groden. We met. Uh, yes. I came up to say hello. Uh, thank you for helping us as the interim. Um, I'm going to let the other select board members and uh, people on the call introduce themselves. <clears throat> Chris Fells. Hi, Chris. Hi. I'm, I'm Francine Tishman. Hi, Francine. Nice to meet you, Regina. Thanks. We also have uh, Ken Cole, who is uh, from our finance committee. Hey, Regina. We met on a Zoom. Yes, hi. <laughs> and then John hi, Martin. Who hi, you? Regina. How are you? I can't see you. You can't? No. Some Go people ahead. would say that's an advantage. Oh, yes. <laughs> John, hi. <laughs> how are you? Good. Yourself? Good. Thank you. Anyway, uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, start in with the questions. I'll, we'll be taking turns just asking the questions, but you have had a chance to look at them. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you would like to be the town accountant for Southampton. Um, well, I've been in um, for a not-for-profit accounting probably since 1994. I lived in New York for 19 years and mostly worked in public health nonprofits doing uh, grants and contracts management, grant reporting, budgeting, variance reporting for the organization, um, routine accounting, bookkeeping. I've had some experience with payroll administration, benefits administration, various audits, workers' comp, unemployment. Uh, in the for-profit area, I've had a sales tax audit um, and a 401k audit that I've, I've had to complete every year. Um, so that's just some of my general background. Um, more recently, I um, I was employed at CISA in South Deerfield uh, for two and a half years as their financial manager, and that was uh, 30 hours a week. Uh, and then from there, I moved on to a 15 office dental practice in Manchester, Connecticut, and that was for profit um, as the sole accountant for that $18 million organization. Um, so that's generally what my experience is, and my background is also, uh, I have an undergraduate degree in journalism and film, which was documentary film, and an M MBA in finance. Um, and why would I like to be the town accountant? Um, well, I've had some exposure to the position uh, 24 hours a week. Um, what I like about it is it's somewhat new enough for me to remain engaged and to learn, and it's familiar enough where I get a sense of how things are done, and I, I feel um, comfortable doing the job functions that I've been doing thus far and learning more. That's an interesting switch from journalism, a documentary, um, <laughs> and to an MBA. Yeah, journalism doesn't pay. And um, back in the day of analog <laughs> film, each fade out is very expensive. Like things like, you know, fade outs and fade ins. I, I was on a student budget and, you know, it didn't work financially for me. I still am a photographer and I'm going through about 25 years of photos, um, trying to get them jig lead and maybe have a couple of entries in a group show. But that's more still photography than video or film. Great, thanks. Okay, let's move on to the next question then. What are some of the skills that you believe you would, <clears throat> would make you a good match for the job in Southampton? And then there's a part two to that. Is this a position that you feel you can grow in professionally, learn additional skills, and expand your accounting knowledge? Yes. Um, but uh, to answer your question fully, um, um, I have prior experience in accounting. I have prior experience in budgeting and in uh, audit oversight and preparation, um, in writing justifications for expenses that need some explanation um, in doing cash flow projections. Um, I'd say I have intermediate experience with Excel, uh, which in some software applications I've had to import and export information. Um, there, is an, uh, there is an Excel export function in the software that we're using in the town of Southampton. Um, it requires a little tweaking. Um, and I think generally I have a good spidey sense about when something is an outlier or doesn't pass my SNP test, doesn't have, I don't have a good spidey sense about it. Um, and I usually bring it, I, for the few things that have come to my attention, I brought them to Ed's attention for his input. Um, and maybe he has 
the institutional knowledge that I lack for certain things. Um, and then, yes, as, as I mentioned earlier, I think there's enough newness to this position where I could learn and grow and um, remain engaged. And there's enough familiarity with this position where I'm not going to be completely overwhelmed and um, at a loss for what to do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So a couple, uh, another two-parter question. We, we tend to kind of like two-part questions here, but uh, yes. if you could describe a, a specific work experience that you've had where your both your organizational and your interpersonal skills kind of contributed to a successful outcome, but at the same time, uh, a similar occasion where you wish you would have done things differently, where either something in the organization or the interpersonal skills that you were using uh, didn't make things go the way you wanted. So if that's clear. Mm -hmm. That's vague enough that I can answer it. <laughs> um, so uh, I was thinking about this and uh, I'd say the last job, uh, the nonprofit job that I had at AIDS Connecticut in Hartford, we did a lot of rapid rehousing um, and that has a very tight timeline. It's five business days from a completed rental application to get a check to a landlord to get somebody housed. And either they're homeless or they're coming from a motel situation and those motel situations are not very good. Um, but we were getting a lot of incomplete applications. We we're missing signatures. I was getting um, landlord names that didn't jive with the W-9s that I was getting. I was getting uh, rental contracts for addresses that didn't match to where the unit was allegedly happening. Um, there were caseworker signatures missing. So. Uh, my concern was the external eye if we were ever visited upon by HUD and a deep dive into the applications and making sure that the money that we were given was being spent properly and that we had the documentation to match that those expenditures. So I had to meet with the caseworker manager and show her recent examples of things that were lacking. And um, I came up with a uh, top, t like a Dave Letterman's top 10 reasons why your application is incomplete to the caseworkers. And, um, you know, number one, signatures, number two. And so we just went down the list and I, I, I said, you know, until you get more familiar with what I am looking for, you should refer to this checklist every single time you submit an application to me. And I said, that way we can, you know, the, the uh, individual being housed thinks that their application is complete, yeah. but, yeah. but what they don't know is internally, it's not. So they're expecting a check in five days and it's not happening. So we, we got the turnaround to be much faster. And um, even though the application was incomplete, it felt more complete when I had all the missing information um, so that both the, the caseworker and the client felt like the rapid turnaround was actually happening in a way that they were expecting. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a good example. Um, and you know, just communicating, being, being very communicative with the, both the case manager supervisor and individual case managers, because we saw we had some that were from other organizations that were not ours. We were managing money for other organizations. So there was a little bit of a communication process involved with that. Um, and then another situation that, um, well, I can think of a couple. I've given this example twice already to a couple people, but um, I was working in a syringe exchange program in the South Bronx. And we had a client who came in very upset um, and wanted a Metro card. And what some of these clients are doing, some of them are active substance users, and they're taking their Metro cards, cashing them in so they can buy a tiny hit of whatever, usually heroin. And um, I was the only person in the office. There were, I was not trained in social work or anything, but I felt like I had to manage the situation. And I gave him a Metro card. And that is um, one of the philosophies in harm reduction is no judgment. So you don't judge people if they're using, you don't judge people if they're not using, you don't judge people if they pick up after years of not using. So I gave him a $3 Metro card and didn't judge on how he was going to use it. Um, but I personally felt um, like it was a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I was willing to take the consequences if I gave out the Metro card inappropriately or without proper documentation because of the transaction value and because of the situation that I felt I was in. Um, mm -hmm. where I felt a little threatened. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Tough yeah. place to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, Gina, what is your level of experience with the municipal accounting, and how did you go about improving your knowledge uh, uh, in, for this position? 
My only experience has been this temp position with the town of Southampton. Um, I've learned some stuff while I've been there. I, I've uh, read up on the open meeting law. I've taken the training, the online training for um, conflict of interest. Um, I've learned a little bit about the various contracts for police and fire as it pertains to timesheets, which I review. Um, it's my understanding that there are courses offered at UMass or online probably now to become certified um, as a certified governmental accountant, which I would take um, to gain more knowledge. Um, I would definitely attend meetings, um, even if they were not required as part of my job, just to learn more about the interconnectivity between different departments and the bottlenecks that might happen and how we can work around those. Um, does that answer your question fully? And I, yeah, okay. Yeah. And I have, I, I guess laterally, I have some nonprofit experience. Um, so I'm accustomed to spending taxpayer money indirectly and being accountable for it and being transparent with it. Um, Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, which of your previous experiences, though not in municipal government, do you most do you feel most closely resembles the, this position and why? You, you sort of touched on some of it, and I thought you raised some some good points, but if you can elaborate further. That'd be great. Um, I would say probably um, just uh, audit oversight and prep and um, year end closeout. I don't know if you do. I haven't seen you guys do it. Much. Uh, monthly, quarterly, year-end closeouts, variance reporting uh, in nonprofit, and probably grant reporting, um, and making sure that the money is spent the way that it, it should be, um, and that everything is allocable and appropriate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Regina, how do you envision your role interfacing with uh, departments uh, that in town hall where you'd be working? And do you in general expect every department to be held to the same standard? And if so, how would you maintain a level of adherence to those standards? Um, I'm gonna read the question again. Um, well, I have been interacting with department heads, um, mostly around expenditures, uh, you know, AP warrants, and in some cases, timesheets. Um, I think one of my goals, if I were hired, would be to streamline the timesheet process a little bit or even go to an online timekeeping system, if that's even possible. Um, especially with the police department, there are so many different rates and um, different ki types of overtime and allowances and everything that it, the timesheets don't accurately reflect the payments that are made because there are short weeks and long weeks and things like that. So trying to find a way with the chief to sort of make a timesheet that works for him and me uh, would be a goal. Um, so I think departmentally, um, the standard that I would hold similarly would be accuracy and um, um, mathematical accuracy and also signatures that are missing. Um, but I think that each department has its own unique set of challenges and there are different rules for, uh, and different case structures for different departments, some are union, some are not. So that's mm -hmm. one concrete example that I can give you. Does that answer it enough? Oh, adherence. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I have emailed folks about things that are missing and things that are lacking and I need better co copies of or you know, missing signatures or dollar amounts that don't add up. Um, in terms of like a repeat offender, if that's the word that I want to use, um, it's really about documentation and communication. So, and laying forth expectations, articulating them, meeting with someone, helping them, if it occurs again, meeting again, reiterating expectations, helping them. Third attempt, maybe going to a supervisor or to Ed, if that's the next up, um, to just doc show my documented uh, attempts at communication and explaining and next steps, if any. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm up, I guess, huh? 
Yes. yes. All right. Number seven. Accounting, accounting supports each department uh, headed by independent decision makers. You don't have a decision making role, but you become aware that a department head uh, did not follow protocol. How would you correct it and make certain that the same situation didn't happen again? And I think you've more or less answered that in the previous question. Do you want to add anything to that, Regina? Um. I, I, I think I've gone into little incidents. I think if it were a flagrant violation where there was um, inappropriate use of funds or personal use of something that belongs to the town, that's not. That's more of a, uh, I think that that's a level beyond me because I'm not their supervisor. I bring it to someone else's attention. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good, thank you. All right. Um, Next question. The accountant position is central in town government. It requires familiarity with laws and regulations, attention to detail, organizational skills, confidentiality, and adherence to operational deadlines. Can you speak to your skills in each of these areas? Yes. Um, I think um, compared to other possible candidates, I, I don't have a in-depth familiarity with laws and regulations, and I admit that that's my problem. However, um, I'm a quick Re Regina, you're a little too close to your mic, maybe? If you could, yeah, okay. there you go. I'm sorry, I'm just scratching. Try that again. Try that again, please. Um, sure. Uh, I, I was saying that my, my probable biggest weakness in this position, if it were offered to me, would be my unfamiliarity with laws and regulations. Um, but that I'm a quick study and a quick read. And um, I also know that I have the resource of the Mass Municipal Accounting Association, whatever it's called, and um, the courses that I would be taking to become certified. Um, I also feel like I could probably establish a network with other um, town accountants more informally instead of through the association. Um, Jen Day, for example, told me that Goshen and Cummington use the same accounting software that we do. Um, if there were an issue, I could ask them how they resolved their issue if it was similar. Um, so informally, I could reach out to peers that way. Um, and then uh, attention to detail organizational skills. Um, I think I brought a few things to Ed's attention that I just want a clarification on. And um, organizational skills, when I feel it's my, when I, when I have a position, I have ownership over it and I am organized and pretty organized with computer stuff. Um, I can, I'm pretty file organized on a computer. Um, I use Excel a lot uh, for my own tracking and um, pulling in and out of uh, software as I need to. Um, confidentiality, that hasn't really been too much of an issue. Um, I don't think you folks participate in the open checkbook. Um, so I'm not sure how confidential salary information is among town employees. Mm -hmm. uh, benefits uh, and, and health information is not my, would not be the bailiwick of this position, but I understand that there are HIPAA concerns with personnel issues and I would never violate anything that is supposed to be held in confidence. Same with personnel issues, if there were any that, that came to my attention. Mm -hmm. um, and adherence, adherence to operational deadlines, I think I've been pretty good, Ed, you could probably speak to this better, about meeting uh, biweekly warrant deadlines um, and adjusting my schedule as needed to make sure that those happen on time um, and willing to fill in in other situations to help other people out if needed. Um, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as as you know, um, this is actually um, a thirty hour per week position. And so, how do you feel that this schedule will work for you in the long term? Uh, is this something that um, you feel that you might need to require additional hours to remain in the position and stay engaged, or is the thirty hour per week position? seemingly satisfactory to you right now? Um, it's hard to gauge. I think tw I'm at 24 hours a week now, which is mostly just processing accounts payable um, and posting other payroll warrants. Um, 
We haven't dealt with anything about um, other kinds of posting revenue side, for example. Um, I'm not sure if you're still planning to hire a part-time person uh, to do more of the AP data entry. Um, and, and I think there'll probably be more hours at fiscal year end and during an audit over, over audit prep and oversight. Um, so 30 hours a week sounds reasonable if there's a part-time person also being hired. If not, it would probably need to be more hours. That is the plan, Regina, to have a, um, uh, another person in the office. Mm -hmm. How many hours a week would that person be? Ed can speak to that exactly. Yeah, it's, it's posted for 20 hours a week, which uh, the, uh, the previous assistant uh, town accountant was. Okay. And I think 30 hours should do it. And, and I understand that it's an exempt position if I need to work longer hours to meet a reporting deadline or a, an annual deadline. Uh, I understand that that's part of the job. Mm -hmm. Good. Virginia, do you have qu any questions for us? Um, I guess I have a sense of the 21 budget. Um, if you could speak to what fiscal year 22 and 23 are looking like, are they going to be flat budgets? Um, do you see contraction? Do you see an expansion? Well, I'll let Ed start with that, and then I'll certainly invite anybody else to speak to that. I don't see contraction. I mean, our, our issue here in Southampton is basically what uh, we usually receive for additional revenues in any particular year over uh, – the previous fiscal year really usually do not cover our total cost increases. Uh, usually those may be eaten up quickly by increases into our retirement contribution, health insurance costs. Uh, we have two different school systems here. We have uh, a regional school district, which is grades seven through 12, and we have our own school district, uh, which is grades one through six. Uh, sometimes they compete against each other for funding with the regional school district, uh, depending on what they come out with for a, a budget. Um, if four of the five towns that belong to that regional school district approve the budget and we didn't like it or didn't want to, town meeting didn't want to approve it or didn't approve it, it makes no difference. It's, it's, it's implemented. It's there. Um, so, um, you know, from, from that instance, our local school district comes, comes in um, second. But, not, you know, I, w I will tell you that there are years when you never know what health insurance is going to do, but um, any growth that we may have may be eaten up by retirement, health insurance, and, and the schools before we get to any other departments. So um, even, even mm -hmm. though the total dollars in revenues may expand, uh, you actually could be looking at a you know, reduction in the services offered to our residents or businesses when all is said and done. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that, you know, at 22 and 23, uh, just because of what's going on in, in COVID uh, and nationally in the state, uh, that there'll be you know, tight years. Uh, and, you know, then the other question is, uh, depending on where we are, you know, would the town look at uh, taking a possible proposition two and a half uh, vote to uh, supplement uh, the budget to town meeting and to uh, the uh, the voters of, of Southampton. So um, those are challenges we've faced ever since I've come here. How many uh, times have you invoked Prop Two and a Half and tried to get that override? Uh, Southampton had a reputation for a while of never passing an override in spite of multiple attempts. Uh, 
two years ago, the town voted in favor of an override. And um, prior to that, I think for at least the previous 10 to 15 years or more, uh, they were, I would say there's been at least, um, I don't know, someone might know more specifically, I would say at least eight to 10 attempts that were, uh, that failed. And there've been a variety of methods, uh, whether it's uh, menu override and, you know, there's been a lot of attempts. I'll just add to what Ed said about the schools. I used to be on the Hampshire Regional School Committee, and I think that it was hard to get our hands around sometimes the budget. And it was five towns, and Southampton represents basically 50% of the students at the school. Um, it involves uh, students uh, opting to go to Smith Vocational, and uh, all that goes with that, and transportation, and quite expensive. You're not always firm on the numbers, so you're sort of working a little bit blindly sometimes. But what happens is uh, the budget in the past has been uh, very aggressive or ambitious in the past. And so uh, if four out of the five towns approve it, then Southampton is, has to go along with it. And then all the other departments have to be redistributed accordingly on a, you know, on a fixed sort of amount. On top of that, all the contractual uh, benefits. So it made a very difficult situation and almost made it uh, like the schools were competing with the other departments in town. In the last couple of years, we've had some uh, really good discussions, really good regional meetings of the finance committees and the select boards of the various towns. Uh, we have a principal who's doing an exceptional job. And I think that the latest draft of the Hampshire Regional Budget came in at only 1.13% increase. That hasn't really been looked at or discussed as a community yet. But what I'm saying is, I think there's been a very concerted effort in the last couple of years by the Hampshire Regional School Committee has done a great job, the principal, other uh, folks in the school, to really understand the pressures that the uh, towns are under and have really tried hard to um, address that. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate you don't have a weighted uh, vote. You have a we do have a weighted vote. We do have a vote. Oh, okay. We do have a weighted vote. Yeah, oh, but nonetheless, uh, when it comes to approving the budget, if four out of the five towns approve it, then uh, we are we go along with it without um, without having a choice. We could vote down the budget, and then we'd have to go along. Um, would other people uh, like to speak to um, uh, the question that Regina asked? about the upcoming uh, two years um, budget? <sighs> I heard a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping, I, and I know the, you know the budget calls have gone out and the departments are trying to work on those, but last year we had a very, very painful process. Uh, I think um, you know, we, we got a little bit of a late start to say the least. We didn't have a functional finance committee to help us get through the process according to our bylaws and our process. And we had, more than one very, very late night um, on Zoom trying to balance a budget in Excel and move things around and, and do across the board um, cuts that were, you know, across all departments. And it was a painful process. So I'm just hoping that this year, even though the budget may be tight in terms of what we're going to be estimating from the state, um, you know, we can get a better handle on it earlier, uh, and certainly with a finance committee in place now and um, really understanding where we need to go to provide the services that we want to provide to the residents of Southampton. I mean, I think we were a little bit lucky to get some things that might have been part of a budget um, through the CARES Act grant. Um, so that might diminish a few requests, but nonetheless, the requests are, are out there. We know we've got a variety of things to to um, adjust and pay attention to. And, um, you know, it's gonna be another challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. I second that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, want to say any more, Ken? <laughs> you want to say anything more about that? Um, no, I, uh, you know, I think it's, um, it's encouraging that, that Regina has been in the process as our interim, that um, she sees fit to uh, apply for the job. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we haven't scared her one way yet. That's right. <laughs> I do that. Still time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I I just want to, I don't know if this is even a possibility, but I always think that 
if the accounting could have an aerial view of all the department budgets, is there ever a possibility where you could envision w ways in which we could save money? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know through like centralized I, services. I, I, I don't yeah, you know. I, I think it's I, I think I don't have that view now. Um, there's always job sharing. I don't know if that's possible with municipal government. Um, and um, it sounds like you take advantage of state contracts with, with respect to purchasing. Um, you know, there's ways in nonprofit to write grants that include people from other departments. So you can do interdisciplinary kinds of things in the nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. So when you're when you have an eye for a grant that you're applying for and you know that you have a department that needs money, if it's appropriate, you can write in a, a budget line for one person, you know, whether it's salary or expenses that need to be covered that aren't being covered in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look at it from a, you know, a, a uh, a, a ground up kind of way of where the budget shortfall is and trying to find grants that would fit that and write people and and uh, uh, expenditures in there that need to need to get covered um, as long yeah. as they're appropriate. Yeah, and it's just just to add on that. I mean, my thought would be that that would be something like if we had a grant manager type thing. I mean, when we've got a lot of reporting to do to the state or the federal government, I mean, the extra time not a, not an extra position, but rather the time it's going to take the extra time out of somebody's job to report to that. I mean, that is something that oftentimes could be covered through a grant line item. My understanding is the the departments do that now. Um, probably with some input from the accounting department, but uh -huh. um, Ed can speak better to that. Uh -huh. Yeah. John, I'm wondering if you wanted to speak at all to that question about the upcoming budget. Um, John was also on the finance committee before and was our liaison to finance um, and to, um, has been helpful very much to the finance current finance committee, like uh, Ken said, was all uh, fairly new. Do you want to say anything, John? Uh, not necessarily. I, I guess what I'm thinking in relation to Regina is uh, she seems to be able to view what we're doing now, come up with some positive suggestions in the six weeks she's been here, and maybe some areas that we can streamline and improve. And, and to me, uh, for being here only six weeks and being able to come forward with that, I, I think kind of gives us a sense of the type of person she is and the, the type of person she will be. So I think that's that's very much a positive. So I think although she doesn't have the municipal experience, obviously uh, she knows about MM, MMA and the courses and certification. So that took some research in addition to doing the work in only 24 hours. So I, I just want to give her a, a credit for, for doing that and, and bringing it to the table tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. I, get, I guess I would I would have I would have uh, one other question, and that is I guess the aspect of reportability. Um, I know in, in in looking back over your resume that you've had um, a number of um, responsibilities, but this this is probably a reportability unlike anything that you've had in the past. Without, hopefully, I'm not going out on a limb here, but um, <laughs> you have a reserve seat right up front at the annual town meeting, and <laughs> a lot of interested townspeople that are going to be asking questions of you and and other committees, and it, it, it's a whole nother aspect um, that, when you think about it, um, it, it becomes a concern. Is that is that something you're comfortable with? Um, it would be uh, the hot seat is a little bit new for me. I did have a little bit of a hot seat kind of role with the Pioneer Valley Symphony Orchestra. I was their part time bookkeeper. Um, they had severe budgetary challenges. Yeah. Um, they had a youth program that a lot of the parents felt really strongly about, and a lot of their other revenue sources supported the youth program. So. It almost felt like a setup. Um, one of the questions was, um, "Do you do you do you need each aspect, each programmatic aspect of the uh, symphony to make money?" And I said, "I don't think that's the goal. I think the goal is to 
at the very least break even, but that some programs support others. And we have grants that support programs that do not make money. Now, for example, you know, they, they were charging tuition for the youth orchestra that by no means covered the cost of running the youth orchestra. And even the music fees that they were charging for printed music for chorus members were the lowest in this part of uh, the state and probably did not fully cover the cost of the music that we were purchasing. But we had other revenue sources. We had donations. We had someone who every year donated money to buy music and to pay for royalties. So there were other ways, but I, I think I think what they wanted me to say was if we were a dollar in the red, we were canceling their program. And I didn't say that. Um, and I knew that, you know, the youth program was probably the most charged of all the programs that we offered. Um, it was a, a resource. It was a way to learn music. And it was an after school uh, program for a lot of kids uh, who did not have a lot of other resources in some cases. Um, so. That was a little hot CD. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm used to couching my words. Um, I think what I would feel most comfortable with is doing a deep dive into all the expenses that have hit the various accounts before I arrived. Because I, I kind of get a sense of what is happening. Sorry, didn't hear the end. Didn't hear that. I'd like to do a deep dive in all of the accounts for the transactions that happened prior to my arrival, um, because I didn't, I didn't see them. So I, 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 I want to get a better sense of everything being in the right place and making sense. And yep. then I can speak intelligently to questions that are asked that way. Um, honestly, in 24 hours, I've really just been dealing with the present and not really diving too much into the past in right. terms of um, charges that have happened on the budget. Okay. I think the position, you know, I think you know, it's, a, it's a small town and I think that uh, we have um, department heads, very dedicated department heads. And I think that uh, being, um, is, uh, being accurate, like you said, uh, was very important, making sure that protocols are followed, making sure that there's fairness uh, between departments, having good people skills, knowing where your lane is, um, not overstepping a department head, but at the same time, giving information that will be helpful in decision making. So I think that um, those are the things I think that are important. The more you learn about the budget and the various line items, the uh, I think more comfortable it generally is to be in the hot seat at a town meeting. Um, but that uh, the accountant does play a significant role in the town meeting. Ken is absolutely right. Uh, in terms of verifying signatures, uh, people ask questions and being able to have the, the uh, Excel spreadsheet and be able to answer them accurately um, is important. So what other questions come to mind, Regina, for any of us? Um. I think you, you touched a little bit on this, but um, it is a small town, and I'm just wondering what the challenges are other than budgetary uh, working in a small town as the town accountant. What can I expect other than the hot seat at the annual meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. I think it's, uh, I mean, money's a big, money's a big one, uh, having enough money to be able to provide what we, um, you know, what we'd like to do, you know, there's so many things between services for seniors and a greenway and public safety complex and fixing roads. And I mean, my challenge is always wanting to do more and always having, um, you know, the pressure of having the funds or coming up with the funds. But, you know, we have a beautiful town and we have a, um, a lot of people interested in open space and uh, a new technology committee and um, a new grants committee. And I think that there's a lot of people that are volunteering a lot of the town time to make the town better. I think there's the usual tension between building and conservation. There's the usual tension around uh, trying to increase business without a you know public sewer or uh, the uh, infrastructure to do that. So I think there's a lot of uh, things that are typical for a lot of towns. Um, but there's a lot of wonderful things about Southampton. I feel fortunate to have landed here. Mm -hmm. So um, who else? Yeah. Oh, just to, just to say, I think one thing that you know the challenge in a way of of a small town like this is that 
um, you know, we may have whatever, 20 or so employees in town hall, for example, but you're you're basically whatever your job is you're the front line i mean there there isn't usually too many places you can delegate it because right. of our structure the departments are like a one or two person operation at best and so you know <laughs> you're kind of a jack of all all trades with whatever you've got to do because you know your work you may not know department x's work and vice versa and so it's it's sometimes hard i think to try and figure out how you could maybe make things more effective or more responsive to citizens inquiries when there is such distinct um i don't know kind of um Hmm. I don't know what I want to say. Distinct boundaries, in a sense, for lack of a better word, between departments, just because of the technical things that they do. Um, and so that I think that if I were working in that area, I mean, in town hall, I, I think I would find that a bit challenging where, you know, you couldn't necessarily say, hey, look, I'm really short here. I, I'm hitting a deadline. We've done the best we can. But can I borrow somebody from, you know, Office X to help me do this? And you know, that may not be likely, likely to do. <laughs> I just wanted to add to that uh, because it's similar to what she said. Um, the other thing I think is challenging. I mean, I've had four jobs as either manager or director, and I'm used to a nonprofit where everybody reports to me in town hall. You know, this one reports to the, you know, their board. This one reports to their board. These two report to the voters. These people report to Ed. So, in terms of our reporting structure and all that, I think that becomes a challenge uh, sometimes, but that's the um, current situation that we have is that there's a reporting structure that's varied and there are a lot of implications with that. Mm -hmm. but one of the unifying factors in all of that is accounting because yeah. everybody has to go through that door. Yeah. Okay. And so, and I, and I just want to mention something about what, what Ken mentioned in terms of the hot seat. What, what really is that you have to have the information available and, and, and to be able to answer the, answer the questions. It's, it's not like you're being challenged because you made a decision. What accounting does is process decisions of other departments. That's right. You just come up with, you know, the explanation and the background that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else want to add to the um, question from Regina around specific challenges uh, with Southampton? Uh, I, I think just to follow up with Francine is saying, this is probably a very popular position in town hall because everybody goes to you <laughs> and with, with favors or questions or whatever it is. So I think you'll be challenged when people come to you and ask you for things that you can't do and that you're gonna to have to explain it to them. But I think more so people just wanna know some answers on the budget and on their specific line items and in the accounting. And I think you can be a real asset to people to sit down, take a few minutes, explain it to them. So next time they know the answer to the question because I, th I think that'll be real important. And I think this position is, is that type of position. Mm -hmm. oh. Any other comments about that? Regina, do you have any uh, other questions for us? No, at this time. Okay. All right. Well, the other thing I just wanted to ask is if you were selected for the position, um, when do you feel you'd be able to start? Uh, I'm completely flexible. Um, I'm, I'm honestly still getting a little bit of unemployment. So uh, I'm not in a rush. Um, so if your timeline needs to get extended for whatever reason, I'm fine with that. If you need me to start two weeks from now, I can work with that as well. Okay. Do you have, uh, Regina, do you have any responsibility, financial responsibility to your uh, employer? If you uh, I believe there's a contract that Ed signed and there is probably a fee. Um, if, if I haven't met the terms of the contract, there's a fee to the town. Right. Uh, so you may want to ride that contract out to avoid the fee. That's your call. Um, I don't know what the dollar amount is or what the terms are, but Ed can probably speak to that. Yeah, we actually have, Ken, we have that information, okay? Right. Yep. Yeah, we are. We have obligations uh, because of the um, 
the connection that was made through um, the temp agency. Okay. Other questions? Anybody else on, uh, want to speak to or ask Regina a question at this point? No. No. Thank okay. You. Well, Regina, thank you very much. Uh, very nice to um, uh, talk with you this, this evening. Yeah. Thank, thank you. For, thank you for your time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And right. so we'll be uh, back in touch next week. Okay. Okay. Great. Have a great weekend. You thank too. You. Thank, care, Regina. thank you. Thanks, Bye. Regina. Bye. Bye. Um, any closing comments from anyone on the meeting? No, I, I was a little leery about doing um, an interview by Zoom, but it, I think it worked out well. Um, and I'm glad that we were able to give them the questions ahead of time. I think it made for a smoother and faster flowing interview. They were prepared and, you know, I think um, we got some pretty good information out of both candidates. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I've found that doing interviews uh, lately, um, it's nice to see people without a mask on. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> well, that's that's true. true. <laughs> yeah, you kind of forget about that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So where do we go? Where does it go from here? Uh, so what we'll do is we'll end up um, adding up and scoring um, uh, uh, the questions that we have, and uh, the uh, the it's on the agenda for Tuesday night's meeting to have a further discussion. We have the option right now to make a recommendation. We have, obviously there's background checks, there's references to check, there's a contract that would have to be negotiated. Uh, is there anybody that wants to put forth any um, nomination or anything at this particular point? Do you wanna think about it, add it up, ask Matt to uh, yeah. perhaps- Yeah, that, that was my suggestion. If yeah. Matt has a chance to take a look at the, you know, the interviews and as if he were a participant, right. I would be interested in, in his feedback as well. Yep, I would agree with that. Okay, then- um, can, I have, can I ask one other question? Sure, absolutely, Ken. Um, were these the two finalists or, the, or two applicants? I'll ask, let John um, or Ed answer that. We, we interviewed a number of candidates, Ken, and these were the two that Ed and I felt were the, the best uh, for the finalist position. We brought them forward. Okay. Uh, this question, I guess, would be mostly for Ed. Um, are you concerned, Ed, at all about the lack of municipal experience in both of these candidates? In a world, I would be. Uh, I think we're at a point just because of the 30 hours a week and what that figures out to be, uh, you know, on an annual basis that we're a little bit limited. And there, I don't think there's a lot of candidates out there uh, anyway looking to move. Uh, if this were a Friday, 40 hour work week at the current rate, it would probably fall into, you know, $65,000, uh, $68,000. And at, at that point, I think you might get some interest for, from some assisted town accountants in, uh, you know, some other possibly towns or cities that would be in time to make the move up to town accountant and uh, and make a little bit more. Uh, so I, I think that lifts us a little bit. I mean, in, in a perfect world, it'd be great to get somebody with municipal accounting experience uh, and soft right experience. I just don't think we're going to find that. Mm -hmm. and, and if I can just add something, we had one candidate that we interviewed, very qualified, but he misinterpreted the amount of hours in the pay. He thought it was going to come out 40 hours at the, the pay level. So once we interviewed him, we were really upfront with him saying, it is only 30 hours, and mm -hmm. here's the annualized. Is this really what you want? He went, oh, no, no, sorry. I, I thought it was at this level. So, you know, I think that backs up what Ed said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and, 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 and that particular person actually had, you know, two applications 
in that you know he was moving forward within the interview process for a considerable amount of more money. Mm -hmm. And am I right in um, in the fact that our previous accountant came to our town without prior municipal experience? Also, so it's uh, you know it's conceivable that the right person uh, with the right you know skill sets would be able to uh, have the resources and the mentorship to be able to learn the various things that are needed. Yeah, and I think like John said, and I've got a background in accounting, accounting's accounting's accounting. You just need to know the, you know, the idiosyncrasies of that particular type of accounting. Right. Yeah, he said they're basically the same concepts. They just function yeah. under different systems. Yeah, unless you're going to do cost accounting, which is, is yeah. different, but, you know. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, right. You just so, yeah. Not have to learn the Massachusetts is it regulations that go along with it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, we'll, um, if there are no other questions or suggestions, uh, the do you have anything else, Ken? You wanted to ask? No, nope, not at this point. Okay. So, what we'll do then is we'll ask everybody to count up. I'll contact uh, Matt and just uh, inform him that the, they happened and not discuss them, but encourage him to access the recording, which will be posted as of when, uh, Ed. Can we get uh, Jen to get it up as soon as possible? Yeah, it's, it's now weekend, so I don't know how quick that'll be, but I'll ask them to get it up as soon as possible. All right, I'll try to uh, ask him to please try to access that before Tuesday night. Uh, we'll discuss uh, what scores came up and uh, if someone would like to make a recommendation at that particular point. Do we have the option of reaching out uh, before Tuesday night and ask uh, for the references? Or is or have, other, have they notified, well, in the case of John, previous empl uh, current employee uh, or... Do we have the authorization to reach out to references um, if, in fact, the references involve a uh, current employer? We, we don't, but I can reach out to both candidates and find that out. Okay. I think that, you know, that you might have to be wait good. until you made an, an offer was yeah. made. Well, Before. maybe not the offer, but I mean, make a selection first. I mean, wouldn't you reach out only right. to check references on the one you're looking for? Right, but then once you make the offer to that person, then you check their references. They're yeah. contingent on the right. right. Yeah. Contingency. Yeah. Right. So okay. a, uh, go ahead, John. A question, a question, really. So I've interviewed them twice, both of them, and I've got my own opinion, and I know who, in my mind, I think would be the strongest candidate. What do you want me to do with that information, or nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're, you know, if, if the select board isn't at this tonight uh, interested in speaking up and saying, I would prefer this particular candidate, you want to wait, give Matt a chance to actually access if he can, think about it, add up your scores, uh, then uh, you can uh, do one of two things, John. You can write up a recommendation and uh, send it to Ed, who can send it out to the select board, or I believe you're going to be on the call on Tuesday anyway to be part of the yep. disability presentation. You can just let us know then, since I think okay. at that point, uh, my hope is that we're going to come up with uh, our nomination or recommendation on Tuesday night. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that then. Okay, that'd be good. Great. Okay, everybody ready to adjourn? Yeah. Yeah, Great. sounds good. Like make a motion. Yeah. Be, re yeah. Really, be before you do that, do you have to ask for the open time for the public, which is on the agenda? Oh, it is. Thank you for everybody. I'm going to miss you, John. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm sorry about that. Uh, open time for the public. The select board reserves time for open time for the public, and I won't read through the whole thing, but is there anybody from the public who would like to um, be recognized? Uh, is anybody raising their hand? Everybody's on mute, so is anybody... Uh, in Unmute themselves if you like. Okay, it looks like everybody is quiet. So <laughs> yeah, they can go to, they can do the chat if they want to get on. Yeah. But they also can unmute themselves, um, is what Ed just said. And it doesn't look like that's the case. So in that case, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. I'll second it. Francine and then Chris, all in favor? 
Tishman, aye. Falls, aye. And Groden, aye. Thank you again, John, Ken, Ed. Uh, have a nice weekend, everyone, and we'll see you on Tuesday night. Okay. Take care. All right. Night. Good 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 night.